This is the third in a series of lectures or videos on moment frames for lateral bracing or resisting horizontal forces. The first one was on simple moment frames. The second one was on tapered frames or single tapered frames. Uh, and this lecture is on what we call, what I'm calling multi-taper moment frames for low-rise to mid-rise buildings. And again, we've been talking about the architectural flexibility of, of moment frames in terms of ease of movement through the bracing planes. There are costs associated with the moment connections, but many of these have been minimized by careful design and systematic production. Um, there are also benefits in these rigid frames from a more distributed uh, foundation or, um, excuse me, a more distributed frame which requires a smaller foundation than we saw for the case of braced frames or triangulated braced frames. All right, so let's consider again the behavior of a rigid frame. We looked at one previously that was fairly tall relative to its width. Now we're going to look at a fairly uh, low rise, long span structure. So here we have the basic frame with the wind loads on it. We have some overpressure on one side, some suction on the other side. Here we have the same frame subjected to gravity loads. And in this case, the presumption is that there are no pin joints anywhere except at the base here and there. So under wind load, we get a deformation where we have some tilt here and some tilt there. And both these members meeting at this joint have rotated in the clockwise direction, both at that joint and at this one. And this is the moment in this frame induced by the horizontal force of the wind. Now, because this is fairly long span, the gravity effects are going to be more severe than the wind effects because this cantilever is not very long. It's basically cantilevering from there down to the connection point. Um, it's, it's not very long and we don't have a great deal of wind load on that surface because it's not a large surface. So when we looked at the moment uh, effects, the moment effects of associated with the wind load are small compared to the moment effects associated with the gravity load. Here we see a positive moment in the center corresponding to this kind of curvature. Then we have a curvature in the opposite direction producing this negative moment at the ends. So in the design of this structure, since this is our big uh, structural burden and we look at this and we realize we don't need any moment capacity right there or there relative to this gravity load. On the other hand, when we look at that point, which is about 20% of the way in from the end, and we come over here, we do see that we have some moment there induced by a wind load. So we can't put a pin joint there exactly, but we can make the structure thinner there and thicker here and then thicker at the quarter points. So we go thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. And that structure looks something like this, where you basically have a pin joint at the base, a super moment joint, some modest uh, moment capacity here to prevent the wind loads from blowing the building over, in which case under wind load, this frame wants to rotate down and this frame wants to rotate over in that direction. And so we still have to have some capacity here. They can't be pin joints. And in fact, if they were pin joints, we'd have one, two, three, four joints that are free to rotate. And this structure wouldn't be stable even under gravity load. This is just another structure which is built on the same principle. And in, the, in these two cases, we have a roof and some slope associated with the roof, but that roof can either be flat or it can also 
uh, have a floor up above and in this particular structure I can't remember whether it's a one story or two story but this portion appears to be fairly flat it's very thick here it's thinner there it's thick there and we can't see it in this image but it gets thin and thick again uh, over to the other side in this particular part of the building it goes through a temporary partition so you can't even see it but I will show you the image on the other side and it basically is the mirror image of all of this all right so this is the connection at the center you'll notice lots of bolts on the bottom because this portion is in tension and again they've made this deeper than it would have otherwise needed to be because this method of the bolted connection is not as good as if we had continuously welded the connection there but the people who make this don't mind making this a little deeper because once they've paid for all this plate and the shearing capacity um, they don't mind making the plate a little bit deeper this is another view of that joint this is the joint where it connects to a really deep rigid column and you'll notice more bolts on the top because that's where the tension is occurring and this is the view on the other side and this shows uh, the bracing that's used to keep the bottom of this rigid frame from kicking out under the compression and this is the shallow point and it's kind of ironic here that the the part of the beam where they have the least moment demand is where they've welded it up and then the place where they have the worst moment demand is they've bolted it together but i think the reason for that is they actually wanted to accentuate the uh, variations in depth as part of the architectural expression so they made sure they made this part as shallow as possible and then to make sure it was a good joint they welded it up continuously rather than bolting it so if i go back to this structure right here i guess the point i'm making is this is very deep that's really shallow that's very deep and i'm presuming that they chose to basically create this as a factory fabricated structure and make the welded connection there uh, because they wanted to accentuate the depth here and the depth there relative to there okay so here we have a structure as I mentioned it's thick here thin thick thin thick and it has a sloped roof which is good for getting water runoff during a rainstorm um, we can increase the slope and do something else that's really uh, kind of cool in this case we have this the flat sloped top surface of the truss which by the way is very nice in terms of assuring that we have a constant slope for water runoff on the roof um, and it uh, makes the fabrication of this top cord really simple and all the framing of the glazing really simple and then on the bottom cord they've chosen to make it curved and in fact they've gone thick thin thick thin thick just like this thick thin thick thin thick except they've done it with this beautiful nice curve and you'll notice something else they've made the bottom cord larger which they didn't need to do structurally in fact if anything they wanted to do the opposite but there is uh, this is moment connected to a deeper structure which we can't see here but there is compression in the bottom cord here and so that's a good motive for making the bottom cord fairly thick but I would argue that they made this bottom cord thicker also because they were trying to accentuate this curve and make it the most visibly apparent element there so they've created a curve which human beings generally like um, but they've done so without a great deal of expenditure and in the meantime they've kept a lot of the repetitive elements such as all this glazing uh, really simple 
it all has a constant slope with straight mullion members. We can create a rigid frame and then we can tack a, a cantilever on each side of it. This cantilever tends to counterbalance that cantilever and so some of the burden that would normally occur at the center here has been alleviated because the tendency of this frame to lean against this frame uh, is diminished because this cantilever and that cantilever are tending to hold those two frames apart. And in fact, this portion right here is almost balanced over that support. And this portion right here is almost balanced over this support. And so the burden on the center part has been fairly drastically reduced. And as a consequence, it's not very deep right there. I would argue actually that this is an, a really beautiful structure and it's really quite sad that whoever detailed it chose to fill this in with this opaque uh, material and somehow uh, the elegance of the form has been fairly substantially undermined by the way this uh, curtain wall has been designed and installed. Here's another structure that's based on a fairly similar concept. You'll notice that we've got elements coming up that are moment framing at this point. We've got another one over here. Um, again, we have cantilevers coming off of that on each side, which is uh, fairly similar to this, except this structure uh, has got a lot of stuff going on. For example, this element now has been curved. Uh, which is nice for stretching fabric over, but it also has a really nice shape. Um, this has been turned into an arch by putting this time member here. And then the tendency of that arch to roll through has been inhibited by this bifurcated kingpin. So the tendency of this arch to roll inward here and bulge outward there is inhibited by these two struts. Um, another interesting thing that's going on is this frame only exists at every other bay and then there is a round tube spanning as a beam from there to there and so this particular framing element doesn't have a vertical coming down but to help it work better this spanning member has not just worked as a beam, but it has torsional properties because it's a round tube. So the interesting thing is though, we do have something similar to this where we've got a, a moment frame and then cantilevers uh, bolted onto that. Here we have a moment frame with cantilevers bolted onto that. Um, when you look at this, your immediate thought is it's arches because that's what catches your eye. But clearly what's going on here is much more complicated than that. And there's a substantial amount of rigid frame action associated with these cantilevers, which are moment connected to these curvilinear parts and also moment connected to these uh, support members. So this is a daytime shot. This is another shot I took in the evening on the inside of this structure. And this shows the tubular uh, spanning member between one frame and the next. And here's another one going from this frame to that frame. And that tubular member is supporting this element, which then is more beam like so it's kind of like a classic beam which has a cantilever here of uh, we hope around 20 percent in there but it doesn't have to be optimal that cantilever can be pretty much what you want it to be but it does have the beneficial effect that a load on this cantilever tends to lift up on this portion of this beam like element this is a, an external view. You'll notice the moment connection there uh, bolted on after the fact. 
So these uh, cantilevers are transported to the site as separate elements and connected. And because this connection is really deep, we can get away with making it with just bolts. And if we could get close to that one, we'd see that that uh, cantilever is connected in exactly the same fashion, except it's connected to the wall of that rigid frame rather than to this infill piece. And that's a close-up of that connection. And that's, unfortunately, we can't see the connection here because this uh, drain element is in the way. So that ends our video on multi-taper moment frames for low-rise to mid-rise buildings.